Hello, I'm Timothy Hobbs, and today I will be going over the installation process for the Clue Pshatel Donor Database developed by Altamat ZS. So I'm going to start by going to the Clue Pshatel GitHub. which is on our GitHub uh, organization under the name club. And I'm going to go ahead and clone that. I'm using a completely clean uh, installation of Debian running in a virtual machine. Okay, paste. And it's cloning. So if we look at the readme, we should first copy uh, env sample to env and change the change means. Not really relevant to the review here, telling them. Of course, it's a very clean VM. So, secret key change me. Um, Jenga settings module. Mm. Uh huh. So, this should be dev, I think. see yeah it should be dev I'll update that after I've done doing the screencast and I don't see any other changes other than the secret key and I don't actually need to change the secret key for development and so I will leave everything else as is and um, now I will do docker compose build. Uh-huh. And it tells me that I need to sudo into do that. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while this is running. Oof, that took a while, so now I have successfully built the, uh, the Docker images for Docker Compose. I'm going to go ahead and open up a second terminal. Open terminal. So I have two terminals next to each other. Yeah, yeah, it would be nicer to have a window manager, but... Or even something modern like no more. This is faster, but I wanted to use a very clean and quick setup for my virtual machine, so we have something clean and quick. So, back in the README, the next thing that I'm supposed to do after Docker Compose build is Docker Compose up. So I'll go ahead and copy that and paste it. Huh. It's trying to keep me safe for myself. I wrote that readme. And then in a yet another terminal window, why is it down? Uh-huh, it's downloading Redis. But it, yeah, Docker is always the smartest. So now I have, I'm running the Docker Compose up, and once it's up, I will attach to the Docker web. So I'll do, start typing here, Docker, sudo Docker attach. web run. Yeah. 
in some rare instances, this will not be the name of the container. Ooh, that looks bad. What's going on here? OCI runtime failed. Uh-huh. Maybe that doesn't matter. Let me try. That's an error I haven't seen yet, to be honest. Yeah, it's, it's loading up. So um, I think that error doesn't matter. It's just that this older version of Docker Compose is erroring out on the expected error that we would describe here in the readme that celery cannot be found. I think that's the only thing that's going on there with that error. So here we want to uh, create a virtual environment in our Docker container. Um, yes, so uh, the destination dot is not writable. That would be because um, what is the reason for that, actually? Ah, mm -hmm. uh, the reason is that I use sudo to create, um, or the reason is that the way Docker works, I should improve this step, definitely. But the way Docker works is that uh, it runs as root, and when it, mounts volumes, it actually creates those volumes if the folders don't exist yet as root. So here the Venn folder is owned by root and that's not what I wanted. I wanted to share that Venn folder with myself from the host to the container. And so I'm going to uh, Go ahead and sudo ch own timothy ch own minus r timothy then and I'm going to do the same thing for db. Uh, I think that's all of the volumes that are involved here, and I should have used exec probably rather than attach, but it doesn't matter. I'll go ahead and go here and do docker compose up again and it will start um, the Clube web container again and now I'm back where I was and now this command should succeed. Yes. Okay, so that was fine. And pip3 install requirements. I hope it's not too confusing visually the fact that I have this overlapping terminal. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize the one that's running Docker Compose so that you can see the terminal that's actually important. And I'm going to go ahead and pause until that installation is done. Okay, so the pip3 install command has completed and I am going to run this next command which compiles the translation messages because right now what we have is we have a bunch of PO files and uh, we need to change those PI fi PO files, translation files, into compiled files. We don't... Uh, include those in the repo. And you'll actually need to update the translations every time you make changes to strings and recompile them. And there's a um, Django admin make messages command that updates the PO files from the source code. So the next command that I need to run is Django admin.py migrate. And it is not happy, which means that something is wrong. And that something is 
that oof 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 why does it want to look in uh-huh this is actually an error with the with the database maybe i shouldn't have done that ch own on the db folder i think i shouldn't have done that the the the, the yeah i shouldn't so i need to go ahead and go up here go down The section error from Postgres saying that it can't access the database folder, which is a lie. It can, but uh, we're going to delete that folder, and then when we do up, it'll create the folder again with a properly configured um, database. And this time when I run it, uh, flower and celery actually launch correctly because uh, they've been installed with this pip install command. So that's why they're, it doesn't end, the, 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 the Docker Compose up doesn't end in some horrible error immediately. So now when we go and we attach, then uh, we can try migrate again. I'll go back and update the README after the screencast, and I will fix all of these problems that I found. I don't think I need to pause the video for the migrations. I don't know how long they take. It might be slower on the virtual machine, so I'm going to go ahead and pause. Okay, so the migrations are done. And now I need to create a super user for myself. And this command, if I remember correctly, is going to throw a strange error, but it doesn't matter. You should just ignore all these random errors. Okay, so... Yeah, so it throws an error, but that doesn't matter. And Python manage up shell, and I need to go and create a site object for myself, and that site object needs to be the domain have the domain that I'm going to access the development server from. So from Django.contrib.sites.models import site. And site the objects that create mm, name equals localhost and domain domain equals uh, local uh, host and I think actually I'm going to be accessing it on port eight thousand so I'm going to go and add the port there and. One thing that's important to understand is that uh, the site is going to be configured in the um, env file, and uh, or maybe it's not configured here, but it's configured in the settings cat project settings dev. Dot .py, maybe, or maybe it's in settings base, maybe it's in settings base. Okay, so here's one thing. You can configure the site name with an environment variable and 
site ID. So the site ID, the default site ID is one. And if we go back into the shell and we get uh, so right now we already had a site named example.com that was from the uh, from the migrations and I actually need to uh, update that site rather than creating a new site so I'll go ahead and do that Or actually, I need to, I can't update it in place. I need to go ahead and put a variable s1 equals s1.pk is one, s1.domain is localhost 8000, s1.save. Oh, what the, f what on earth? Uh huh. That is a terrible, terrible thing. Uh, okay, so now we have one site whose PK is one and the domain is localhost 8000, which is what we need in order to have it work. And this is only a formality part of Django that we're not actually using, but it craps out with a horrible error if you don't have it set up correctly. So that's important. And now we can go, I'll just show you. It's not actually necessary, but if you do develop.sh, um, and you have this set up with the correct pseudos, then if you need pseudo, if you're not in the Docker group, which I'm not in this VM, Then it'll load up the, a fresh Docker container for you, and you'll be in the virtual environment immediately, so you don't have to do the source then bin activate stuff, and you can immediately launch the server like this. Copy, paste. Yes, I want to paste, and. This should run the server. And if I open up, so the server is now running, and if I open up the web browser, localhost 8000, then I reach a login page, and the server is running. Foo at bar.cz, type it. Maybe I'll try this username that I... And now I'm in the administration. Go ahead and save that, fine. And I can do stuff here. So what can I do? I have a whole huge number of things. Uh, there's a bunch of things that need to be configured. For example, you'll need to if you want to do tax confirmation generations, you'll need to upload fonts and create a template and set up emails. Um, if you want the help desk to work, then you'll need to uh, go to help desk queues and set up a queue. Um, 
I don't know. There's so much here, and it's so thinly documented <laughs> that I don't really know what I would say now. But, for example, if you want Dotoema to be configured correctly, you can add an API com account for Dotoema, and you need to set up administrative secrets, but uh, this is for the Dotoema configuration. I'm going to stop now, and maybe I'll try to document things better in a later tutorial.